verse 5. Yeah, not telling you. Don't tell me. Kayla, Kayla. You're telling the world. <laughs> verse 5. Yeah. <laughs> Can be short. Why didn't? Wait, wait, wait. I help you. I'm gonna write it. <laughs> We're professionals. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so what? <laughs> so. <laughs> I hope we'll be calling. Yeah, we are. It's like those, uh, those <laughs> things that they give, like, uh, you know, la off. ladies who work in an no. office. No, 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 no. We can no. just kind of fit this, this is, all day. No, this is King Arthur coming back from the Crusades using coconuts. Sounds for his horse. <laughs> Which movie is that from? Monty That's the Python. Monty Python. Right? Yeah. Are we recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my horse. <laughs> my horse is getting away from me. <laughs> That's the behind the scenes. They don't see. I have a feeling they're going to see this. If you stop twerking, <laughs> I think you'll be safe. But That's my practice. This I don't is why we, we need, so the, we need this the reverse is camera angle for this. <laughs> how the Jefferson Squad came about. <laughs> Your dance moves. <laughs> yeah, my twerking. You guys don't understand. I can twerk. Like those hips can move. This is so dangerous. No, no, it is not. We are professionals. <laughs> I can twerk. I can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We are back on a actually exceptionally warm Dutch spring day. Cold uh, brew. Cold brew. I'm Appreciate actually just with water because if I had caffeine, I'd be exceptionally sweaty, I think, at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be the sweaty guy. Um, we're actually joined. I am a knight. Julian is the, <laughs> the knight on the horse. <laughs> Can't. Julian, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have you introduce Kayla, as so that seems Kyla, like your department. Yes, Kayla here is Coffee Girl, my fiance, the women I will marry this year at some point. We have not set a date, but we're getting there. So her name is Kayla. Kayla. Don't, don't <laughs> get be fooled by the American pronunciation. It's actually said Kayla. <coughs> and uh, Kayla is uh, something else. Anyway. And that's Coffee Girl that I talk about all the time. So you guys actually get to see her first. So she's mortified because she does not do public speaking. <laughs> and so we decided the best way to start with on the podcast, obviously. Why not? So Nep nepotism is still going strong. So now I did, good. I actually saw, speaking of, of the Coffee Girl, the, the bike. The bike. Oh, you guys are going to see the picture. So, the so, bike. so you and Richard each have basically like a... a Custom bike made. Oh, it's a uh, bespoke. Yeah, it's made yeah. from scratch based on our measurements. Uh, you know, like I have, a, I have long ass femurs, so like normal bike just destroys my patella tendon. Yeah. And so here, uh, just so people know, like living in Holland, we ride the bicycle 45 minutes, 50 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. At like a minimum. Is it, it, yeah, yeah, is that how you get lean? I'm like, it helps. Actually, anytime, we, so we, we go somewhere two days without riding that. My hammies get tighter, my hips get tighter. Like I realize not so much on the cardio level because we don't go that fast, let's be honest. We used to be... I go really fast. It, you mean <laughs> like when we first got here and the eight-year-olds were passing us by that fast? So you'd be the six-year-old, that's true. Yeah. She does go faster than the six-year-olds in Holland. Mm -hmm. But the, the active recovery that it provides is actually... Yeah. Uh, this something. So when we go Paris or whatever, we walked about 10K a day. I realize how much I get out of that mentally yeah. and physically. Ooh. And how much our hips locked up after being on a plane and not riding your bike. Yeah. Yeah. So now you you drive everywhere and suddenly I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like you know, mm -hmm. you start training and instead of going like, yeah, I can go. It's like, oh, I need to warm up. What is this? That's the thing that I've ooh. actually found a lot when I come here is that I'll come here and like, oh yeah, a little back thing, a little hip yeah. thing. Then I gotta fly here, which is no bueno. Mm -hmm. um, but like, a couple days of cycling, yeah. you just. A guy has to be just kind of aware. And I said, those yep. like, That's I noticed when I would ride, yep. but like my lower back would start to bother me, hips. And sometimes if I was riding a bike, it would make it worse. Mm -hmm. Cause I would feel every time I'd pull up that it would, I'd almost round. And then I realized you can start to pay attention cause there's so many reps. 
You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, oh, I'm just pushing like with my knees. By the way, isn't it funny that you realize that they are going on the bicycle with the quads versus the hammies glute attachment yep. and it's not the same? No, and as soon as I realized that, that I that I should push like with my ass, yeah. Then all of a sudden, and then this proprioception. Are you on the outside of the <laughs> foot? Yeah, and, inside, and then, and then, and then you start to go. I can use my hammies on this and on my quads. That is so weird. Oh. That's the thing I'm looking forward to the most with my own bike is having a seat that <laughs> will fit my ass. Because right before it was a small seat, so I couldn't fit on it. Now I have Richard's seat, so I'm like trying to go side to side. Trying to get around Richard's peach. Yeah. <laughs> the, so. the bike is a little bit too big for her still so yeah. Yeah, okay so the, the guy bike. yeah the bike so the guy basically takes our, your measurements right and then uh, so it's not just the legs it's the arm also like how far from the steering wheel mm -hmm. are you um, and, and then so he's going to build the bike based on those so me the other bikes were fucking up my patella tendons this one I just you're slightly forward like you're almost falling you go fast on that shit and he put like the special tires where you can go at 45 degree angle and just keep on going <laughs> thank goodness so yeah. so i was flipping through and this is he's uh he's at uh, republic dutch on instagram official yeah republic, official, republic, yep. republic and, dutch uh, is the name of the company yeah. and i think from and, and i've only seen the two bikes that you guys have had yep. the loner yep mm -hmm. and then just what he has on his website and you can tell right away though like we've talked about a guy who's into like mastery yeah like that's the that's definitely his department there. yeah yeah so so you have all the measurements but after you got all the other shit which is the color yeah so you choose the color of the frame you choose the color of every single stuff you want to put everything perfect there's a gps in mind and then, then it goes on and on and on like that and everything has to be so you choose the handle and it has to be this way and how many gears do you want and this and this and which then is this. really cool yeah Unless you're just coming off of a plane for 14 hours, and this is the first thing that you do when and then you get now you have to make 500 decisions. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't care. And plus, he's like, uh, put your arm up. Yeah, so, oh, she started freaking out. I'm lo it's his, I mean, but um, he started to go put your arm up and everything, and he goes, see, like, this, um, this arm is about three millimeters or five, six millimeters longer than the other one, and I'm seeing her face starting to decompose. It's like, did he just say I have an arm shorter than the other? So now she's feeling, she's just off the plane. And she has a tendency to sometimes be, you know, to, uh, to be like, to be, yeah. So, no, it's not dramatic, but just like, she like, did he just not say I have a short arm? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so she's starting to go like this. And then I go to her, it's like, do you understand what six millimeters is? Because that's the metric system. No, she, I'm thinking like six inches. I'm deformed. See, yeah, exactly. Going to be able to do anything right do again. Do you understand that's a quarter inch? She was like, oh, <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Then. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's why. I guess yeah, to tell from your face that. It's just being really precise. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but like when she said quarter inch, she went, Okay, <laughs> I feel better now. So yeah, you know, I could totally see it on her face. She's like, oh my God, so, so I I'm check a monster, on, I'm a freak. I check on his Instagram now because the bikes he rolls out are just really cool. And yeah. he has some stuff where he kind of shows the process. Yeah. And so I just happened to see this bike in this matte green that I mm -hmm. knew that you were getting. And then he's peeling the label off. And it's no, hashtag it's coffee, coffee girl. girl. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. No, it's cool. So I would guess it's got to be. It's definitely like nice. a day or so away. I. Hope. I mean. I'm excited. Yes, to put it together a few days, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's getting there. Because at this point, it looks like just finish work. No. Almost no, because he puts everything together. The dude is precise, precise. Yeah. yeah. I suppose there's no way to make anything too fast at that level. No, but it's. No, no, because he wants everything right. So he's going to put, the, you know, like the tire, the guards and yeah. all the stuff. He has to be a certain way. And then she has to try it and he has to readjust. And he's very, very precise. Yeah. 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 It makes good bicycles. But the by the way, you get on it, you start running, you go, shit. Well, I finally bought a bike. I didn't say that on the podcast here. Mm -hmm. right? no. So I was renting that, that bikes. Thing, I yeah. was renting bikes for a really long time. Like every time it would come, it would be about a week or so, around mm -hmm. a week. And it was like, 10 to 15 to 20 bucks a day, yeah. give or take. And it's a loner. So it's and it's a loner, so it's yeah. not. It's neither good nor comfortable yeah. and never has gears. So, like, Did you get the brakes where you have to pedal backwards? No, no, oh, yeah, no yeah, I, I, got I always avoided she, that. She g almost ate shit <laughs> so many times. Because the only way you brake is going backwards. Yep. One time, I was like, I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> in Utrecht, <laughs> while people step in front of you, are oh. Yeah. This it's a yeah. it is a maddening experience sometimes because it's very busy, but it's 
He no, was so tra- used to that flow. They don't understand. They have traffic jams or bicycles here. Cars don't do shit. Yeah. I mean, but the bicycles. And by the way, the Dutch are the nicest people in the world nah, not a until they're on, bas- on bicycle. And then it's GTA motherfucker. <laughs> I get six points from hitting you. Oh, yeah. Oh, the second they're on bicycle and don't go slow. The yeah. only thing Because they'll fucking eat you alive. <laughs> the only thing that's more unkind than a, um, the Dutch on the bicycle is the Dutch wind yes. on the bicycle. And I'm it is cold <laughs> and it is pretty strong. <laughs> I'm, I know I know what they say, the flat country, because that shit blows. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I'm built like a human sail. Yeah. So so, so that's <laughs> going backwards. It was so it was, yeah. even, it was even worse. I'd come out if I'm coming against the wind, especially coming up to the office. Yeah. It's a beautiful bike ride for mm-hmm. probably everything except the last, I don't know, five minutes is yeah. really is the only thing that's like city. The rest yeah. of your canal, it's the nice, canal, it's a nice So it's when nice the wind ride. is blowing. But when the wind is blowing, it is right. Have on. you noticed that it's always blowing against you? Yes. It is amazing. You go to the office, you're against the wind. You come back from the office, you're against the wind. It's always against you. I don't know how that fucking works. I'm sure physically speaking, it's not possible. And yet, every <laughs> single time it's against you. You go, how the fuck does that happen? Yeah. It's like going, you know, up the hill on both, both ways. ways. I'm like, how? It's ex- <laughs> I will never understand the wind here. Yeah. So, but, but I, but I, so I finally bought the bike. I was like, all right, I got to get, I'm tired of renting them. And, I, and no gears is, it, it's not working for me anymore. It's yeah, just not. <laughs> And uh, it's changed the game, man. Yeah. I think it's changed the game for me. Did you tell I the story? I got eight speeds. Wait, wait. We never told the story when you first came here, and I put you on a bicycle for a week oh, straight, Christ. and you lost twenty pounds. It was twenty pounds in you lost twenty seven pounds. Or eight days. You lost twenty pounds. The first day is turning red. I'm like, are you okay, Tyler? He doesn't want to say anything, but he's like, I'm fine. And, but it's true. and this is this is June, <laughs> and, but not, right. and, But it wasn't hot June. Right. It was right. it was mid June, and it what I can say it was not hot. Because we were in your place and uh, there was no need for like, I would always, if it's warm at all, I'll crave air conditioning at night. Yeah. I'll be uncomfortable when I sleep. And I never was. Yeah. It was just moving in the weather outside made me sweat. So so we'd go to Unscared a couple times there and it's what, eight minutes, seven minutes riding yeah, from your place minutes, at the 10, most. 12, yeah. And in the morning. Yeah. And after, uh, and after the first time, I think the next two times, what I did was I would bring, I would wear clothes that I would ride there but I was like, I was like, change. I have to. I would change, and then I would train, and then I would wear whatever but, I had on. But that. You have a, to it's like a three clo- three. Be, being a nice guy, I wanted to give Tyler the full Utrecht experience, so I had to show him around. But I don't think you understand how aggressive you are on your bicycle. Whatever. I had to <laughs> show him around. I had to show him how beautiful Utrecht is. So we took a few trips on the bicycle. And and there's some of those where <laughs> yes. bridges are what's a real nightmare here because if it's a bridge that goes over like a highway. While or water. It, it, yeah, it might be like it might be like four or five hundred meters of total the total ordeal, but half of that is uphill. Mm-hmm. Against the wind and in always. with no gears. Always against and, the wind. And so I'm just like it's just it's it's it was the worst thing, and I was done. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was so I was so uh, discouraged. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're stressed talking him saying, "Can you go faster, please?" <laughs> <laughs> so we got and there was a, at one point we got way away, and I'm thinking we're gonna maybe he's got like this cool route back you know like like maybe i know we've gone we've cycled for maybe like 90 minutes and i th- i know we've You're done some moving around we didn't go that far. but what but what i think and, and i thought maybe we're doing some curve and we're like almost you know we're just, no, jump we're just good no, no we're just all the way there and all the way back and every hill every bridge so there's, there, I mean, there's there's bridges that are where you got to like wind around almost mm-hmm. like you're on a car like an interstate yeah. approach and so it's just uphill for circle after circle until you go <laughs> and uh and 20 pounds later yeah yeah, yeah. cost yeah. me all my strength <laughs> <laughs> your legs got bigger <laughs> but uh yeah so that was my th- i guess that that was me training on the uh, uh training my weaknesses for a week apparently that's no, but you start, that's how we started the nutrition protocol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that was it. That, that was that was probably like a month or so yeah, before exactly. you dove in on it. Yep. on that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what? maybe even more. maybe a little more than that. More than that, because yeah. I've been on it for like eight, nine months now. That was last year. Yeah, so it might have been just like a couple yeah, months. Before. Yeah, two, three months. You were still doing sushi. Sushi. Yeah, but plus, uh, yeah, I like a lot of. Sushi, I hadn't yeah. decided to go into the doing nutrition. Meat. Yeah. Well, I sometimes, but I. I did not digest red meat well at all. Yeah. Well, basically ever until I started the protocol. So yeah, yeah back then I, I did I, I wanted to just go in the, um, the nutrition and do it well. So I was like, when I'm ready, I'll go there. Yeah. If I'm not ready, I'm not going there. 
Well, that about wraps up our bicycle conversation. We'll yeah, see you guys go. next Bye. week. And <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> riding in the sunset away from the place. <laughs> so t today, actually, we, we, we did bring Kayla on today to talk about something you're pretty Who? familiar with. It's pronounced <laughs> Kayla, dude. I even asked her before. <laughs> I, at this point, I just don't correct people because I almost feel guilty because okay. he's going to confuse them anyway. No, no, no. Okay, so if we're going to go that route, can you say my name, please? No. No, no, no. Say it the French way. Julian. That's not bad. That's, <laughs> that's not bad, but you say it's Julien. N. It's N. That, that's it's a like the, if, if there was two N's and an E, that's how you pronounce no, it. Yeah, because that's the female version, so now you're going to have to say the male version. Julien. Come on, you're almost there. Well, now we're pretending the N isn't there. That's Julien. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Betrayed. So, 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 I'll, Kayla. I'll, I'll say Kayla when she says Julien. Yep. How about that? We'll make it work. Julien. <laughs> That's a feeling. Suivez version. moi. Yeah. <laughs> Such a <laughs> deep. <laughs> <back. Okay. laughs> That's pretty good. So, so, one of the things we want to talk about today, though, like, like the main, like, scope of today is kind of is how to how to digest your training, which I think. Yeah. What we want to really make this about those is like how to make your training work. You. For you, well, and okay, not the other yeah. way around. But that's why actually we're starting the auto regulation uh, training, training yeah. protocol, is because we saw so many parallels between nutrition and training. We saw, in the sense that we saw the same problems. Mm -hmm. We saw the exact same issues. We're like, fuck it, let's. Because everybody as a nutrition, as a nutritionist, just like everybody has someone programming from from them, but they don't seem to be getting the stuff out of it. Yeah. So. In that sense, you can't blame the nutritionist or the programmer. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if the person doesn't understand what is it they're doing, it seems, uh, let's put it this way, it's not working as well as it should be. I liken it to, um, you know, if, 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 if someone's going to build a house, mm -hmm. you can have a really good plan. Yeah. But if you use shitty materials and yeah. a shitty carpenter, your house is going to fucking suck. Oh, if you don't know where <laughs> you're you supposed to I mean? put the pillars, yeah. like uh, all that stuff. I mean, you, is but like but you can uh, have all the, all, all, yeah. all of the plan, but it's the execution that matters. Exactly. You know, and at the end, that's all that matters. And there is quality in the time that you invest in building it, right? Like yeah. you're always going to screw something up if you do it mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. So I want to, will you give us just a run through? I, I hate the, uh, I hate the, tell us how you got started doing fitness yeah. thing with podcasts. Because yeah, what that does is choose up the first half and nobody cares. I know when I started a podcast, they're like, so tell me about strong fit. I'm like, like in how many words? Shit. Yeah, yeah uh, how many I'm a, how many months do I get? Yeah. I'm really good at being a person of few words, so okay. this should be. Yeah. So, but but, but what, <laughs> I, but, but what, <laughs> what, what I want to hear you talk about is is will you at least describe for me the trajectory of your training, yeah. where things start going, start going well, and then what happens from there, and where maybe like the finding some sort of bottom in your training is like. The, the, well, the symptoms of the symptoms of. You know, like your, s for example, your training is going well in the sense of you're stronger, you're fitter, but then there's all the other shit on the side no yeah. one wants to talk about. Yeah. What yeah. should good training mean, by the way? It's like, okay, just before you start, because uh, this is where I want, I want to talk about. People say good nutrition. What do they mean by that? They mean I got bigger or I got leaner. Mm -hmm. That's usually, right? Isn't yeah. that basically the point, right? Uh, no one talks about if you can sleep at night. No one talks about if your inflammations are running amok. No one is talking if you fucking hate yourself. Yeah. Right? If you can starving you yourself. you the people around you? Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, do you have cravings that drive you insane all day? Do you look at other people eating food at the restaurant and hate your life? Like, can we talk about all this? Mm -hmm. if for the nutrition, for example, like I would... Because otherwise you can maintain it. How long does it take to be strong or fit? It takes years. So if you can't do the shit for a year straight, so getting to under 10% body fat is not that hard. Staying there all year long without any of those symptoms, because those are symptoms. If you hurt yourself, I'm sorry, that's a symptom. Uh, that's a lot harder. So I think it's the same thing for training. Okay, you put five pounds on your snatch. Awesome. And then what? And, you've n and now you're divorced. <laughs> exactly. Right. You can't sleep at night. You yeah. fucking hate yourself. You can't enjoy training anymore. Can we talk about that one too? Can we define what good programming is just like what we, we have to define what good nutrition is i think we need to define what good programming is yeah. what it should bring you yeah. right so yeah so answer all those questions right now. yes wow. so <laughs> go ahead kyla well i'll uh, be right back i'm gonna go get coffee <laughs> and <laughs> let's start with just just what let's talk about what, like the curve of your last say couple years of training is yeah like. so um up to 2017 so the first like three years of crossfit just recreational fitness, like wanted to work out and then drink some beer and eat pizza. Mm -hmm. um, okay, 
as a as a collegiate athlete, you were up there, though. Yeah. So, okay, so people need to know that. Yeah, yeah, I played college field hockey for a few years. Had D1? An D2. D2. Um, had ankle surgery, stopped playing. Um, but I had a fitness background. Like, I'd been lifting for years. I'd yeah. been playing sports since as long as I could remember. Um, and then just took a, a time away from fitness altogether. Yeah. Um, and my sister and my brother-in-law were coaching at a CrossFit gym. And my mom knew that I wanted to go, so she bought me like the living social coupon for the month. And I went every single day until someone was like, listen, you, it's not supposed to work this way. <laughs> you, you're supposed to come like five days a week. <laughs> okay. So I did that. And yeah, whatever, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, whatever. So I did that, and, and things went well. Like I, I got really strong very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a team in the area who was compiling some athletes to do to make an effort at regionals. How much you weigh at the time? Um, that year I'd gotten up to like 185. That's the year when you started CrossFit. The the year that I in 2017 mm -hmm. when I was the alternate for that regionals team I was 180. You were an alternate on the regionals team and 180. Jesus Christ. Bigger that's than that's 90 percent of the men. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. At regionals. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> you're you're five nine. That's a meter seventy. Mm -hmm. uh, for for reference, what are you? What is your body weight now? I know a gentleman doesn't ask, but this is fitness. Like 160. Yeah, so about 20 62. pounds difference. Yeah. 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 Wild. So go on. Yeah. So so you had kind of then gotten pulled into the world of uh, the competitive side yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So I'm working out with people who are way better than and me. And you, I would guess that I'm just guessing you probably actually wanted that. A oh yeah. Because you had left sport. Yeah. And most people who, I, I see people get to the competitive side of CrossFit two ways. They either never play competitive <laughs> sports or team sports, and, that's chance, and they get yeah. a taste of it, and it's like, fuck yeah. Or they did, and playing team sports as an adult, like, like in your mid to late 20s at that point, if you're not doing it for school or for yeah. money, it's really probably stupid. Yeah. So it's like, well, I'm not going to go play football or, yeah. you know, I'm going to yeah. play city league basketball and have some old yeah. man blow my knee apart while mm -hmm. I'm going right. for a layup. Instead, it's like, oh, just exercise, yeah. right? So that's, you ended up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I played like club field hockey with adult leagues, but it, yeah, it was the, these people, are, they're just doing this for fun and yeah. I'm way too competitive for this. I'm not happy. So yeah. So a couple of friends are like, come train with us. So I go and I get my ass kicked every day, but it's a good environment. Like mm -hmm. they're very encouraging. We all train together at the time. We're following the same programming. Um, it's the first time that I have like consistency in my training. So they make regionals. Um, I go along, I watch them and I'm like, next year, I'm, I'm not going to be anyone's alternate like yeah. I'm doing if I'm, I'm either doing this by myself I think she was going to say I'm not gonna be anybody's bitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm freaking doing I don't care what it takes I'm doing it um, so I started following regular really good programming free programming and I'm spending 90 minutes from? Invictus oh the free programming mm -hmm. from Invictus yeah yeah it's great stuff I'm spending 90 quality 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 minutes in the gym so you're training once a day once 90 a minutes yeah and Five I'm, days a week? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm doing well. I'm feeling healthy. Things are great. And I do that all through the rest of 2017. Wait, Because you're losing the weight at the time. Yeah. So, so maybe Ju June or July, yeah. I start focusing on my nutrition. I stop drinking. And I start losing weight pretty quickly. I mean, let's be honest. Nutrition is mostly stopping drinking. That helped you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I went from, so I was, I was tracking my macros, obviously. And um, that, when that I we'll talk about this. when I took out the booze that I was drinking, I went from like twenty five hundred calories to like eleven of real food. <laughs> every You're laughing because you know exactly like what that means. Yeah. Every single yeah, day. Like so yeah. so it was a very significant it's like calorie a straight deficit. Straight liquor to keep the calories down. Exactly. Don't mix with much. No, no, but that's all I did. Vodka and water. That's a lot of calories of vodka and water. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. She was <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> now, the first time Julian and I went out for drinks, we had one, and I was like, <laughs> I'm a wuss now. I can't oh. do this. Yeah. Um, so, so, you had, so you went to the, so it sounds like at this point, though, you felt like you had had this, this really good balance, right? Yeah. Training was kicking ass. Maybe anything else that you were doing, if it was a little too much at that time or whatever it was, uh, it wasn't catching up to you at that point. Things how, were how much you forward. weigh at that, at that point? Like, let's say like you're doing good, you're doing the 90 minutes, like the free Invictus programming, you focus on the nutrition. 
so August of that year, I weighed 155. 155. Mm -hmm. oh, right, okay. So I yeah. lost a steady like two or three pounds every month okay. very quickly. And still well, not, actually, and not that's feeling drugged yeah. down mm -hmm. at that point. And so now you lost mm -hmm. 30 pounds by then. Yeah, I'm okay. PRing all my lifts. I'm s snatching and deadlifting more than I ever could mm -hmm. at 180. Um, my life has changed significantly. It, I mean, stressors, but and it's, in, it's going in the right direction. Yeah, okay. Um, and so that was the path that I took up until the Open of 2018. And my goal is to do as well as I can. The Open's not like a good place for me to perform well, right? I'm a yeah. big athlete. Yeah. I'm not good at gymnastics Tall stuff. Is no good for the Open. Nope. And then suddenly- You get one, yeah. a, year, you get yeah. one a year. It's the year that Dave bone. Castro programs a one rep max clean at the end of the workout. And I'm like, something yeah. is Someone. happening. Yeah, just one. Um, but yeah, so I, the goal was top 100. Yeah. That would have been cool. By the third week, I'm sitting in the top 20 or 30 of my region, mm -hmm. and I'm freaking out because I'm like, I hope I videoed all of my stuff right, and if I make it, like, I'm gonna have to work out in front of people because I'm training by myself. And by the week five of the open, I'm 36th. So I like I have no idea how or why, but I'm excited. What do you mean? Yeah. Why? Because you're a good athlete. Well, well in think. my mind, it's like. This what you're not. This wasn't. But they take top twenty. Yeah. 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 So, but you still you're in the top forty. That's great. Yeah. That's a very good. Uh, yeah. Way better than I expected to. Yeah. And so naturally, I'm like, yes, like I can actually do this. Yeah. So I need to start training like a real athlete. So. And at, do more. At, <laughs> the, the, and I wouldn't say that uh -huh. you, you, you probably didn't fall short of your expectations. No. But that came on, and all of a sudden you set your sights to something even further. Oh yeah. And then I would guess that you just went like this and. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there, there, okay, but that's where it starts, though. Mm -hmm. So you exceed your expectations. Yeah. Right? And that's the moment where you should be happy. The logical thing is, I'm happy, I exceed, therefore what I'm doing is working. Let me do more of that. Because you and should feel like I've done this work and I deserve what I've gotten. Yeah, and I mean, very often I've done this work and I got that progress. Yes. Therefore, if I do more of the same work, I keep progressing. Yeah. But what some people, well, what, what I see often, too, is people, though, will come in and they'll they'll surprise themselves a little bit. They'll you know, exceed their expectation. And what happens is they, because of the surprise, they go, mm -hmm. maybe I'm an imposter. I need to do more to make up this difference oh, yeah. so I can do it. Well, yeah, so Julian said that to me before. I said I was gonna do a qualifier just to see where I landed. And when I'm finished, I'm like, oh, I was six spots away. And he's like, the goal was not to make it. Like, yeah, you can't so make the goal after you've already yeah, finished. So she, she's asking, well, he was, yeah, she's asking me, can I, should I do the qualifier? I'm like, you can't do that competition. So why would you do qualifier? No, but I just want to go to see if I can do that workout well. Like, I've been lied to before, so <laughs> I can see bullshit. But I'm like, okay, fine. So what is the goal for the workout? Well, I want to be top this or this or that. Okay, does the workout, does really well, is the top exactly what she wanted. And once that was done, then she adds a goal that she did not reach after the fact <laughs> and i was like no, no 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 wait 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 like that's just asking that's just setting yourself up to lose every single time right there yeah. she was like yeah but if i had done that she said, but that was not the goal we set up at the beginning <laughs> so you wait until you win then you find something you lose on that was never in the plane in the first place i was like no 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 which no. sounds no. really like ridiculous when you hear someone talk about it and but yet everybody most does of it. us yeah. do yeah. it yeah. yes yeah so yeah, yeah. So, so, so you, so let's, to, to bring us back to where we are, you, you had just finished that year, you exceeded your expectations, yep. and now you're like, I'm gonna fucking do this, Yeah. right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick everyone's ass. So what did, this. what did like buckling down and taking those next steps look like? So, you? yeah, so I invested in specific programming, which was, you had, they were like, uh, morning session, evening session, strongman stuff, conditioning stuff. So and okay. it's specifically first of all, sorry, but I gotta get rid of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. Like I cannot take it anymore. Do you want to share? As much as I love the horse, I'm not old, honey. I just don't want the horse anymore. Okay. I'm gonna just make sure we're chin. still there on we the camera. We're probably okay. We it was half an inch. <laughs> um, so at that stage, do you, so do you purchase the athletes program for Invictus? You're going yeah. from the free to the competition one. Yes, and at that point, in February of that year, I'm at my leanest. I'm 148. 
My so body fat's maybe somewhere between 12 and 14. So ripped. Right. Yeah. I totally ripped. Like I, <laughs> I, I actually had abs and veins. And no, she, no, I've seen the pictures. It's <laughs> like, you know, like she had the hips and the bone yeah. and the shit, like it's borderline freaky. Yeah, yeah. It was, I was tiny. <laughs> So, so, so as you, 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 so you're taking these steps all into the competitive world. Yeah. Then, right. Right. Yes. By that, she means I have to be my leanest while training, doing the most I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which it's basically how she phrased it. At the, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm working full time at a hospital as a social worker. Um, so, and then coaching in the evening, three three nights a week, but essentially. I'm there all the time, yeah. making sure things are going well. So, d explain the day. You wake up in the morning. Wake up at, I get to the gym between 5 and 5.30. Yeah, so l let's do it with the food as well, so that's why people know. Because you're tracking macros at yeah. the time. Yep. Everything is oh, yeah, very, very, We'll have a really good map now. Yeah, exactly. So competitive Kayla. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> was the, no, because I want, uh, people don't, they say they want stuff, but they don't understand. Uh, what, what goes with it. So yeah. go ahead. So you wake up in the morning, what time? I wake up in the morning around quarter of five. I hop in the car, go to the gym. So no, what do you eat? I so don't eat anything. Oh, I, eat? Okay. I drink aminos during my, and coffee. <laughs> so she was going to say I drink vodka. No. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, not at that <laughs> point, but probably at some point. Um, and so aminos and coffee. And I you, do does not sound like a good mix. somewhere between 30 minutes to 60 minutes of some kind of conditioning. Intervals on the rower, running intervals, um, like some gymnastics, mixed modal stuff. Yeah. But a good 60 minutes of accessory work. Sometimes I would do whatever strongman stuff I could manage in the morning if I didn't feel like doing it later. And then run home, grab all my food that I had prepped for, for work, and go, go to work for the day eat breakfast once I got there, which was like six eggs and vegetables. And I think at that point I was maybe eating 15 grams of carbs at breakfast. Okay. Um, and I'd eat two more times during the work day, a little bit more carbs, second meal, and the meal before I would go to the gym around three o'clock was like 60 grams of carbs, lots of protein, um, I'd run home, let the dog out, and then I'd go to the gym. So if I was coaching, I would train for an hour before I coached and then finish whatever was after the two or three hours that I was coaching. If I wasn't coaching, I'd spend the 90 minutes to two hours doing my second session of lifting two Metcons accessory okay. work. And then I'd pound food, uh, intro workout during the, that session pound oats and protein immediately after, and then go home and eat another meal with like 60 to 80 grams of carbs, and hurry up and make all my food for the next day, walk the dog, go to bed, repeat. Over and over. Now as a total, I'm assuming you probably remember some ballpark numbers for what those were like, as far as like how many grams of carbs were you eating in a day? By the time I had stopped counting my macros, I was at 385 okay. of carbs. 150 grams of protein, um, and I was upping my she knows fat exactly. to, Such a yeah. great to somewhere yeah. around 71 grams of fat. What, that's what's funny is it's like it's it's exactly what uh, pretty much you would have prescribed for absolutely anybody who was doing some sort of training at your size. Yeah. Right. Like that's it's always the same. that's the formula. Yeah. That's so the formula. Because yeah, that's why we do. You fell right into a spreadsheet, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's like no, no, this is you. And this is the you. But it's funny, like this is you fits everybody yes. around this. Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah. And so was now. I I think I actually don't know where this story goes from here, but I can feel a crash coming. Yeah. <laughs> so just because I've I've, I've, I've seen this before. At that stage, are your lifts going up? They're starting to stagnate. You're starting to stagnate. Mm -hmm. By you the time that I'd qualified for the Granite Games, I was sometimes hitting my numbers. Okay. Um, but I was your, your training numbers. Yeah. Um, okay. But I was having trouble with any type of pressing movement. Mm -hmm. Like I went. Wait, 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 we're gonna get into that because then we're gonna start. I want to establish exactly where you are because basically at your peak, you're 148. You train two to three hours a day, mm -hmm. right? And you eat 
How many calories? 2,600. 2,600 with a very specific number. That's where you're at your peak. You have, now you're increasing the volume and basically dialing down the food more and more and more. Mm -hmm. All right, so at that stage, your number are their highest. Right, your snatch is at 190? 195. 195. Shit. Okay. Okay. Clean and jerk? <laughs> 245. I'm and a 250 clean. Oh, I'm so, I'm so <laughs> marrying that one. Um, 385 deadlift. Like, I was feeling good. At 148. Fuck me. There's a few competition <laughs> coming up. <laughs> uh, Not going back to that again. That was so, hard. boys out there, you want a strong woman, start lifting. That's all I'm saying, because yeah. she's not marrying anybody weaker than her, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, all right. So, you got to those numbers doing basically 90 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And now you, you start to up the volume and, the, and the, the more food, I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you start to stagnate. How long have you been upping the volume and the macros for now? From when March. When you started to feel like... Uh, from March until June. Well, only three months, huh? And now it's starting to catch up. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's talk about the other aspect of this. Physically, right? So let's start with mentally, then we're going to physically. Mentally, where are you? I'm struggling. Um, life. No, because I know the backstory yeah. to this. So. Um, life had been hard for that year in the first place. So, no, but you can tell people you got divorced, everything yeah. like there's a n shit number of shit happening. Yeah, my, uh, my marriage ended. I uh, had a miscarriage in that time. Um, so, lo lots of traumas. Yeah. You I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking. I start losing weight. I lose my period. Right, right. By the way, oh, yeah, yeah, we have to establish that. I forgot. When did you lose your period? went in August of 2017, so when I was like one, uh, 155. 155. It, at, at that time, you're still doing the 90 minutes a day? Mm -hmm. And uh, what has changed that makes you lose your period? Because you're starting to lose the weight or you just stress overall? Or All of it. All of it, and then the churning is starting to go up as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so basically, you're already starting to pound your body in a negative way. That's in August. Mm -hmm. March, you decide to go for it because of the open, and then now you start to crank the volume even more. Yeah. All right. So now we're in June. Your your lift are the highest. You are the leanest. Now mentally, you are in what place? So I'm not really talking to anybody anymore. Um, I very superficial in my relationships, so I'm like very outgoing at in, d while I'm coaching, but while I'm training, it's like please don't talk to me or yeah. someone's gonna get no, hurt. She has a fuck off sign. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I've seen the first time I met her. Yeah, I'm not, stop me, I'm not really socializing that much with my family anymore. Like, I'll show up to things, but I'm eating my food over here and, like, waiting for the comments to come about what I'm eating, so. But, and uh, you also want to shoot everybody that comes yeah. close to you. Yeah, I mean. Like, like uh, tell yeah. the whole story. You're starting to hate everyone. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't go to the mall because I can't stand people. Like, I'll go grocery shopping at Friday night at nine o'clock because if someone gets in my way, I don't. I'm not gonna like the way I feel. So it was. It so was. I was getting pretty. Self esteem. Uh, I couldn't even look in the mirror. So so wait a minute. As lean and jacked as yeah. you've ever been, and you're like, ah. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I would. I would literally say when I was doing my check-ins, like, oh my, like I'm getting so fat. Isn't that like wild? look at this picture. I have no abs, and now when I look at the picture, I'm like. And it's, you know, and it sounds crazy but to way, you. But she, she still says her shit. She's still like, I look good then. You look good now. You look exactly the same. But in your mind, like, they always say, once you get abs, like, if you lose them, it's the worst it's thing the worst that ever thing happened. Yeah. That is true. It's true. And it, it's very true because every, after you look at yourself in the, the best way that you look, everything else in your mind looks like shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. No, no, I don't no, understand okay. That is not entirely, not everybody. It's not true. See, no, but, but, yeah. but there's this, there's this, idea that you like on social media or when you go to these competitions where everyone looks like they're carved out of stone and you're like if I don't look that way I have pictures of you you look exactly <laughs> like that I know but no. but at the time but, I, I yeah. was not you could okay. not see it let's be honest yeah. you look like that you just couldn't see it yeah yeah and I don't and I, I don't it's an interesting trap too because I, I I don't know how bodybuilders do it where they have to be so I mean, an unhealthy level of lean to, to, to yeah. be on stage, which is part of the nature of it. But it would be soul crushing for me to go from super ripped like on stage and then just know 
but you got to put on about 10 or 15 or 20 soft pounds pretty much right away. You know that so it's like, two weeks from now, I'm fat. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Fuck. Yeah. And if you want to look any better, you got to get fatter. <laughs> yeah, right? You get, get fat for six months and then peel off. But but so so you, what, what's interesting is this, as you're kind of reliving and describing, you're like, it, it sounds crazy. It's as lean as I've ever been and I feel like I'm yeah. getting fat, right? But it's funny is because we've seen and heard this hundreds of times. Especially with so women. Always, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's uh, always, but but it's, I think it's this... Body lean, morphia is a problem yeah, with men as well. But, yes. yeah, but leanness, leanness as a goal is such a moving target. And, and you know it's going to wreck your life. Uh, and, and, and that, that is because now it's every day going... But by the way, women, three days out of the month, four days, they hold water because of periods. And I mean, mm -hmm. at that stage, you don't even have your periods anymore. How come we never talk about this either? That's and that's not about being thing. lean because she got them back. Mm -hmm. So, but that, like, can you please tell, because I've been saying it for a while, but I don't know that they listen. Can you please tell women out there that it is not normal to lose your periods? It's not normal and it's not okay. No. Like, plus, what, and it's like, what are you trading? You, you're, what are you trading it for? You know, like, because you know the what it means the, for you? Right. Yeah. The consequences are a lot. It, it sounds really cool to not have to worry about carrying a bunch of tampons to your yeah. vacation or worrying about when you're going to get your period. Every single day, I'm wondering, like, is there something is wrong gonna, with yeah, me? Yeah, like, uh, number one, I've lost my value as a woman because I can't do the one job that I had, which yeah. is reproduce, yeah. right? And so every time anyone's looking at me, I'm thinking, oh, they're judging me. Like, they know that I am not as woman as they are. Yeah. But that, like, it all just starts to build on itself. By the way, that'd be a conversation with women. You know you can't have kids, so anytime you see a woman with a kid, say, I can't have that. Yeah. Because of my training, because it doesn't have to be logical. It's just that's the and way the you feel, And the only solution right? anyone ever said to me was, train less. Yeah. Or gain weight. Be fatter. Fuck you, I'm not doing that. Like, yeah. I have goals, and this is what I need to do to, to get there. Everything Th else. This is, to me, that's the worst p form of sexism. Mm -hmm. It's I see women doctors saying all the time it's like why well, you women can't lift heavy or because this or this happened to you like be careful with you know this and then oh you can't lift heavy or why well, you want your period here yeah, but that's because you train uh, too much or you're too strong so basically you're too strong or you're too lean give me a fucking break right. we're not talking about six percent body fat okay but the fact that you can't be strong and beautiful and without losing your period that is an insane statement so it sounds to me like at this point, the wheels are just about to fall off. Yeah. Right? But oh, right. Okay, they, my, sorry, they fell off already. Yeah. She hates herself. She hates everybody around her. Can't socialize worse of shit. The lifts are, are stagnating. And by the way, physically, how do you feel? Pretty bad. You can't lift your shoulders, mm -hmm. your arms overhead. There's a day before, there I'm a few weeks away from the Granite Games. I've never made a competition like this before in my life, let alone so by you myself. you qualified as elite, or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck it's called. Like the, and yeah. my, my gym rallies behind me to like, send me off, and like the pressure of not disappointing them starts building, so now I'm freaking out. There was a day that I, I literally could not get off of the couch. I'm bawling. I can't lift my arms over my head, and all I can think of is I'm leaving for this competition. Yeah. In a week, and I ca I can't move. I gotta do muscle ups. I have to days. swim 800 meters in open water, which I've never done before. I'm going to dr I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna make it out of the first day. Yeah. So, at that point, I'm finally saying like, what the hell am I doing this for? Like this is yeah. not. By the way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not what I th I thought this was gonna look like. Why? Like, what's wrong with yeah. me? I'm not happy. Yeah, I'm I'm way past that. Yeah. You're miserable. On that moment, yeah, and then the inflammation. The worst was the left shoulder, yep. right? So it's ma major inflammation where can't do a handstand push-up without pain. I can't jerk. I can't do a handstand push-up. Every time I'm catching a snatch, the bar is crumbling down on me. It's not heavy. All yeah. right. So okay. So this is where you are. And then you go to the Granite Games. Mm -hmm. I don't die. You don't die. How well do you do? Um, I finished where I placed. So like in the 20s okay. I had a couple of top that's 10 really finishes yeah. yeah I know it's so but that's what this is what people understand with the wheels completely off, off. I've, yeah, never right. a, I've never had a coach yeah. in my life no, no but this is what people understand is you see those top athletes if she finishes 20 at the what is called the no it's not the RX division it's the called the elite, elite the elite, elite division yeah. top 20 at the Grand Games when you have all the CrossFit Games mm -hmm. athletes therefore she's doing awesome here she is, 155, lean, beautiful, strong as shit, finishes top Performed 20 at the Grand well. Games. Performs really well. Yeah. That's CrossFit Games level. Mm -hmm. 
And so obviously everything is fine. Yeah. And inside she's fucking dying. The wheels are coming off. So you're saying we shouldn't l just look at someone who performs really well <laughs> and, and think just yeah. mimic what they do. And, and think they're doing right. well. <laughs> they, you don't understand yeah. what's going on behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. The people say, like, in order to be a high level athlete, you have to make sacrifices. So that's, that's yeah, and true. so you, you get into the bar, you get into it with that as the arrangement you You think. absolutely yeah. have to make sacrifices. Yeah. But Which to ones? what degree? Yeah. Which be ones? Because at this point, nothing in this world was worth what I felt like mm -hmm. by the time that was over. By the way, you finish the Grand Games, you're in the top 20, so obviously you're happy. No. <laughs> no. Right? <laughs> Obviously, no, because that's what you did it for. I'm so. like, I need to get back into the pool because that was not okay. Yeah. And the, the things, the places where I thought I would do well, I didn't. So, I so even, the, even, even, even the win comes at a... Mm -hmm. By the way, you, did, you had two finish in the top ten. Yeah. Didn't give a shit, though. No. no. I, it was the first time I ran on an air runner, and I have a top ten finish, and I'm pissed because I should have done better. But the, I mean, this is the this is I'm the mentality not, not, that you start no. to build. It's actually it it is interesting. That that that's why you, when you and I hear, even if we if we would have talked to you at during yeah. the middle of that, it would have, I would have been like, man, there's going to be a bit of a price to be paid here. Yeah. But you you almost don't see it. And but now when you're saying all of it out loud, you it's, know it's, it's it like, sounds it's insane, like, man. But you know what? Mm -hmm. But what people need to understand is that story. I've heard it. Hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of times. And as a coach, if I saw one of my athletes doing this, I would have sat down and said, "Like this is not okay." But at mm -hmm. the time, I'm my coach. Yeah. No, but plus that's not true either. Because um, so sacrifices to make it to that level, right? So number one, losing your period. Is that okay? No. Nope. No, it's not. How many? You want? Can we? I bet you we take a true. Uh, test on this, we get 60 to 70 percent of top female crossfitters don't have their periods anymore. I know because I, I asked to enough to at least half. At least half of them don't have their periods anymore. I kid you, I, the, the number is probably way larger than this. I mean, we have in our in our mentoring program at least three. Well, for sure. No, 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 more than that. Well, I mean, no, we I mean I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like three or four for sure that have. I know, I know, but we have ten women. We have six or seven that got their periods back. Back, yes. So that's yeah. why I know they lost their periods, because suddenly, hey, I got my periods back. I was yeah. like, I didn't know you lost them. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. That's the thing. It's that's like, the thing. Why is this normal? What is this accepted? Yeah. It's not normal, and as Kayla said, it's not... Uh, that is the first time I've heard exactly. him say Exactly, I said it once, time. and now it's Kayla. It's like a French um, guy doing an American impression. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Can I use my credit card? Chewing <laughs> <laughs> gum, uh, what is that, biscuit and gravy? Um, oh my God. Uh, it is not okay. It is not okay. The number of women out there in the top 20 that feel like this inside and are forced to smile on Instagram because everybody has to be strong and pretty, Oh, that, that's starting to infuriate me. Yeah. Because, by the way, if this was the only way to get to the top 20 of the Granny, granny Games, I would have, maybe I would have another conversation mm -hmm. about uh, another opinion on the subject, because I'd be like, look, if you want to make it, this is what you have to sacrifice. Yeah. I would not be willing to help someone do that, but I would be like, all right, maybe. Yeah. Except my biggest problem is that's not true. Right. You do not have, first of all, the period don't have to go away. That mm -hmm. is not true. You're fucking up somewhere. How do you sleep at the time? Oh, I was in bed for five hours. I was sleeping like 30 minutes of both REM and deep if I was lucky. Christ. She gets five hours of sleep, gets 30 minutes of deep, 30 minutes of REM. And the only thing I can think about while I'm in bed is I have to sleep so I'm not sore tomorrow, but mm -hmm. I have so much shit to do. Yeah. So, all right. So <laughs> this is where you are at that stage, unfortunately, you and a lot of people. All right, and then the wheels start to come off. Mm -hmm. So now what? So I sell everything I own and I move across the country with my dog. <laughs> <Doing where Victus? laughs> there you go. Where I know no one. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure next month if I can pay for my rent yeah. and my food and my dog's food. And that wasn't, was that with the intention, uh, that wasn't with the intention of ditching your push for elite fitness, this was to go all in on it, was it wasn't it? Or I, you were going to compete more and I, harder? The understanding for, 
for me was I was going to be a coach. Okay. I was going to pursue being a coach. So this was to take coaching to be kind of your full-time job. Right. Okay. Did you, but yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to slow down on my fitness pursuit. Okay. Like if if enough. they if if the opportunity came that I could be a part of something there, awesome. Mm -hmm. But I was still I wasn't slowing down for anybody. Like you either wanted me to be a part of it or I was going to still do it myself. It, yeah. Um probably a little bit to to my demise like probably could have asked for some help at that point because I'm surrounded by really fit people and really great coaches yeah, but exactly. I'm, I'm so tunnel visioned at that point that like I, I'm too scared to lift around anybody because I've never trained with anybody before so yeah. I'm hiding in the corner and they're they're like like are you gonna come over um, and I'm too intimidated because I've never trained with people before and now I'm training with the best people in the mm -hmm. country um, and it just just kind of kept on sliding down to the point where right. I'm like... So let's talk about that a little bit because I think it's a very important point. So you do the, basically the Invictus workouts, right? And so you see the scores with all the other athletes, which means at that time, since you have people that specialize in gymnastics versus or very strong people, because Invictus has a combination of, uh, of everything, you are not winning a workout. No. You're getting your ass kicked. Every now every and then, I'll lift more than people, but if I like. But there's always somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> lifting way more than you, right? Yeah. yeah. So basically, you're getting your ass kicked. Yeah. By yeah. someone, <laughs> not the same person, but by someone. Someone on, all the time. And when I say someone, I mean probably five to ten, constantly, right? So at that time, you're never ever winning a workout. No. So. Because especially for you, results and rankings seems to be your pri oh, yeah. a priority yeah. for Obviously. you. Well. Yeah. And so I'm, at least at that time. I'm integrating myself into this community, so I'm working out with the classes, and I'm having anxiety about working out with class. A general fitness class. Because, God forbid, I don't, like, win. Yeah. And then then people are really going to judge me, and they want me to coach them, and then I really don't fit in. <laughs> like, now I'm just totally freaking out, just even being in a, in a group setting. Mm -hmm. But so, um, at the, on top of it, so, because so, athletes understand are there why I go there is because at that time you started to learn to accept losing yeah I never That's expected to beat anyone well, exactly so now you basically n think on every workout I'm gonna finish 10 to 15 you are training to lose now yeah because you can't win because you're not gonna beat the top because they have such high-level games athletes is like try to go against Christian Holty on conditioning tell me how that goes <laughs> You know, fifth at the CrossFit game, and he's a, it's after Sam Brings, the best conditioned athlete out there. But I try to, yeah, it's like having to beat Sam Brings on a conditioning workout. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, and then after that, you go against, uh, you know, like uh, Maddie Myers on snatching. Well, you're not going to win that either. And, so, and he goes on and on and on. So at that time, you basically think I suck. Yeah. Because you lose every day. Mm -hmm. This is me training with Brian Shaw. Yeah. Being able to squat over, like, 300 pounds or snatch 190 on a regular basis to me is like no one cares like yeah. that's not enough until you're snatching 200 pounds it doesn't matter like because in you my head count. that's yeah, that's yeah. the price that you have to pay now to get into the door before mm -hmm. it was like be pretty fit and perform well now it's if you you're can't shit. do 20 chest of bar pull-ups unbroken every time you're out dude yeah. you're shit so now basically you start to accept losing on a regular basis. It doesn't piss you off anymore, it's expected. You expect to lose every workout. That's, that's training to lose. And that happens a lot in training out there. When I, s I see people, they go in workouts going like, yeah. Like they, they don't, they're not gonna go to win the workout. They're gonna go to lose the workout as gracefully as possible. Yeah. And, and honestly, lose gracefully, <coughs> fuck you. I don't lose gracefully anything. And that, yeah, that's that, the mentality. And that boils down really quite a bit to the now you're doing work that's on paper right as written except you're going into it going yeah, well I mean I don't have to do that awesome because I'm about to get smashed by all these yeah. people even though, well, even though they're superhumans I'm gonna basically. give it my best effort and I'm gonna suck anyway yeah like I'm gonna kill myself so the whole on this thing workout is and suffering still be on purpose and it makes you miserable mm -hmm. and now you hate yourself because and you can't win ever mm -hmm. like it's a horrible environment what are you training for if you can't even win a workout and feel good about yourself because no matter how good you do in the workout by the way she smashes a workout does way better prs by two minutes still gonna feel like shit because somebody else did it faster yeah 
you get into those environment and it's so hard. By the way, also, so people understand, some of those workouts are written not to be finished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know that, but some of those workouts you're not supposed to finish. That's the point, that you're going to get smashed by them and realize you suck to make your work harder. But if you do that every single day, getting smashed on a daily basis, be, how long before you actually are smashed? Yeah. And you just don't want it anymore. And you quit because you fucking hate yourself. You can't continue like this. Again, if this was the price for, for gold, I would look at it differently, but I disagree. It does not have to be like that. Yeah. And we've proven it. Yeah. So what is the, like, how does one, via training, food, and, and, and I mean, the things that we're talking about, yeah. right? Because nobody's going to call call you up and be low health. I guess we get some. But I, but I mean, people are going to be like, I need you to fix my entire life top to bottom, no, please, right now. I, you do, I know you do. Uh, but, but, but what I mean is, in, in the realm of the things, that, of, of the tools that we have at our disposal, how, with, how did you approach food and training that has no. uh, turned it around? I won't even say turned it around, but like just changed the trajectory of where things yeah. are going. So how did that start? <sighs> Some creepy French Some guy. Exactly. Went to and said you very guys beautiful. Lurking in the corner. Um, <laughs> but even when Julian and I first started talking to one another about training and the things that he was saying, I was still rolling my eyes at. Like, he, what are you training for? Well, to, I want to be. I want to I want to be a fit person that belongs in the room. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I was saying. Like when he said, "What are you training for?" Well, I want to make the CrossFit Games. Do you? Well, yeah, of course. Why else would I kill myself? But what maybe it being enough is just belonging in the room. Maybe it's qualifying for these events and seeing how you do. Mm -hmm. By the way, I wasn't saying anything. I was asking. Yeah. Because at the same time, I'm like, quite thankful for the games. Okay. But every time she talked, the passion coming within her was about coaching. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, but I want to grow as a human being. I want to grow as a coach. I want all this and all this. Oh, by the way, I want to qualify for the coffee game. Yeah. But as a coach, and then the passion, and I was like, because I get that a lot too. It's like, I want a six pack, but I want to eat pizza at night and I want to be fucking strong. That was, uh, I remember like um, Richard mm -hmm. going like, I want to make the CrossFit Games, but I'm not squatting under 550. <laughs> then you don't want to make the CrossFit Games because they're all skinny bitches out there. Yeah. And you weigh 230 right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, it, no, but that yeah. that's the problem is people say something at the ministry. In her case, she keeps saying, yeah, yeah, games, but that's not what the drive seem to be. So I was like, I'm just asking question, but like, do you want to win the games? No. All right, so you want to go to the games? Yes, okay, so why do you want to go to the games for? Well, I would, so then the conversation ended up being, I want to be around those women and know that I belong. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so do you need the games to do that? Can you be in a room? We see how you, then that would be enough, right? Then And then, so I was just poking hole at the logical fallacies of our argument, basically. That's all, I'm yeah. like, yeah, which I'm good at, usually. Yeah, usually. Uh, and, and it was coupled with, you know, very close friends or family kind of saying the same thing, like, are you, are you okay? Like, <laughs> are you happy? Let's, yeah. You're not talking anymore. And like, you don't, what's. You know when people start saying, you were a lot more fun when you were drinking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was turning into that, but. I, I guess I, I don't get that. No, because you're still drinking. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But they were the little the little nuances and conversations that started making you go, huh. Like, yeah. you can't go out with your friends and have ice cream without hating yourself for it. Is that, is that the way you want to live? Yeah. No. Like, when your niece says, can you please have a cupcake with me for my birthday? And you say, no, I can't. Like, no, I don't do a cupcake. Is that, yeah. is that yeah. really who... You want to be. By the way, she can't have a cupcake. Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> those little parts of conversation started to all build up on each other. And by the time Julian comes around, I'm at the point where it's like, I need to do something to change this because it's not, this isn't who I am. Yeah. And so, I change my environment. I stop. Throw away my food scale well, after okay. two or three months. Okay, okay, yeah, no, no, please <laughs> give. Okay, explain how that went because we start to talk about nutrition, yeah. and I'm like, if you want, I can help. I bought at this point. I've bought like the two a day templates because it's some. I can't figure this out anymore. I'm not lo losing any weight, even though I don't know that I really wanted to. Yeah. I, like yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing too. There's, there's no. By the way, every time I ask her for a goal, I can't get one. 
Lose weight, gain weight, don't know. Up the weight, no conditioning, con up the conditioning, well the weight. So there it's all like, well, uh, 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 I'm like, all right, so let's start with something. Do you but want me to help with nutrition? So before we do go in and yeah. define what your like, first steps yeah. were, right? Yeah. The thing you just described, that it's like the most common thing I yes. get amongst people. Yeah. Once they, s everyone comes in with a good goal, usually. If they start from zero and they come in and it, the, usually their why is pretty good. Or at the very least, it's enough to get them moving, right? I want to mm -hmm. lose 15 pounds. So the people that come in with the, uh, I want to live longer for my family, those ones tend to make it because yeah. they're not going to reach that one in a month, right? Yep. But after somebody hits their first 15 pound weight loss goal and then they start enjoying training, they find all these other things, and it's, I want to get stronger, I want to get leaner, uh, I want to be able to touch my toes, I don't want to be able to do pull-ups, mm -hmm. I want to do all these things, I want all of it, right? Just like her, right? Yep. She couldn't really pin anything down. Is That is bad, right? Yeah. Well, because I mean, but, but how do you, how do you, how would you, def how that do you diffuse that? At that you point, because she feels like shit. Right, at know? that point, no matter which way I picked, it was going to be the wrong route. Mm -hmm. I was still yeah. going, never uh, in my mind, but it was never going to lead me to my goal because no, I was going to lose. Please, none of the roads sound like that something that's going to make me feel better. Yeah. Because yeah. stronger means more work. Conditioning means more work. Leaner means more work. Mm -hmm. Bigger means more work. Because everything is this. Yeah. Not once did someone mention to her quality over quantity. It's always more. How far can you go into more? Do you notice that people, when they train and they get stuck in training, what do they do? They eat more. Yeah. When they get stuck in not getting any leaner, what do they do? They do more cardio. The only answer out there is more. Buy my uh, template plus plus. Mm -hmm. Buy my nutrition stuff, uh, gainers, lose, even though they are basically the same yeah. shit with more or less carbs. But yeah. Uh, it's always like you want to be leaner, do this and then add cardio. It's always more and more and more and more. I, even though she was doing her best with 90 minutes a day and a normal, normal and eating habits. And all that more isn't introduced into an empty space. Yeah. That's the <laughs> big thing. <laughs> that that you, more yeah. is like, you're already, no offense, fucked everything up. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, so now I got stuff more of the same thing. Into Th that this. made me miserable in yeah. the first place because I was fine at 90 minutes. And now mm -hmm. that I added volume, I feel like shit. And you tell me I have to add more, yeah. then I'm going to feel worse. Yeah. By the way, yes, you're right. So your hormones are shot to shit. Don't have your periods. You're basically going to stop getting leaner because your body can't absorb the stuff anymore. So it's like um, people that are, you know, like, well, I cut down the calories to 1,500. I need to get leaner. I'm going to cut it to 1,000. No, because you're going to starve to death and stay on the couch and not do anything, which is not going to allow you to get linear. You're going to start losing muscle, which drives you crazy. So now you cut. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. That mentality of more is better every time drives me crazy because we're ruining people. And it's like, well, it's not my fault. But sign up for the plus plus and pay me 200 bucks. Uh, so yeah, there was no way out. Yeah. That's why I was trying to talk to her about. I was like, look, I can help you. But can we talk about where you are? Yeah. And so first thing I say, say how do you feel? Well, what do you mean? No, she was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> How dare you ask me that? Yeah, exactly. She was like, what? Is this your trick to get me to go to coffee? Because so yeah. um, it's working. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. Um, until Scott blew that. I'll explain. Yeah, but um, I mean, the, the turn was slow. I was reluctant the whole way through. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, okay, let's explain. So. I tell her, like, can I help with nutrition first? Like, you choose one, because that's always up. You choose one. Always I can't, choose one. I'm not gonna mess with. I'm not gonna mess with your training. You're doing the Invictus program, which is great. I need to explain a few things about it, because you seem to misunderstand a few of the intent of some of the workouts. You have to understand that right now, you can't win any of this. It's, oh, anyway, but I was like, let's choose one. Okay, nutrition, fine. So first of all is autoregulation. That means we're gonna have to know when you're hungry and everything. And she's like, what does that mean? What is hunger? Yes, exactly. What do like you I'm mean? I'm lean, feel? so I should be hungry. I'm yeah, hungry I'm all hungry time. all the time. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I all I hungry. think about is food. <laughs> what do way, I eat next? That's another one. How people out there spending 24 hours a day thinking about food. The 2,500 calories, which is the same, probably more food than I eat, mm -hmm. and all she thinks about all day is food. Right, and no one is finding this strange. That all she wants all day is talk. She talks about food and coffee. Done at the time. So and then. In there, I kind of hinted about going out too, but anyway. Um, 
that's all basically there is, is that. Yeah. Is, you know, food, food, food. I'm like, okay, I understand that you feel hungry. That's how you feel. But how about happy or stuff? It's like, what do you mean? You know, like feeling good. What is that? Yeah, I'm super happy. Like yeah, I don't, I don't do I'm fine, happy. whatever. No. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm fine, whatever. My body is Hashtag. an instrument of death. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's your favorite joke at the time. I mean, I'm like, I believe you, by the way, but um, yeah. <laughs> and so here I come and I'm like, um, no, you're not going to waste stuff. What do you mean? It's like macros now, that's bullshit. She's like, how dare you say that? <laughs> so that started the conversation. So are you seeing yeah. these abs? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Abs it, by macros, bro. It wasn't until he said, you mean to tell me that you want a total stranger who knows nothing about what you do all day to tell you how much to eat mm -hmm. instead of your body? I'm like, oh. When you say well, it like that, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, and I wasn't, they didn't want to interject this during that part of, of, of the narrative, but you know, when you, when you were going there, there was that phase where it's, you know, no, you lost your period, divorce, massive amounts of physical pain, tons of training, and then you are, is that, where did you enter all of that into the spreadsheet? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. Okay, so, so someone who doesn't have that, but is the same height and weight, as someone who does, yeah, yeah, same thing. It'll work just fine, right? And that's, and so that's a, that's the hardest thing for people. You, you get so married to the macro. Are they saying thing. quit being stressed out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That stresses me out that when you say it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you said no macros, and she said fuck you. No, but okay, but that's right? a very good. That had to be how it went, that, that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a very good point you were making, though. Is like to me, macros are good for one thing, one thing only, which is controlling your eating habits. Mm -hmm. That's what they're for, yeah. because don't eat 5,000 calories of nuts. Okay, yes, honey. <laughs> um, stuff like that, or don't fucking starve yourself, right? Yeah. So macros can be used, especially in a culture, American culture, that does not have a food culture, as in eating habit culture. Yeah. There's no, no one sits at the table in their youth with their parents eating the same thing. Yeah. Everybody's at the table, there's no phone, there's no, there's no TV. When I grew up, my grandmother was like, there's no TV. Yeah. And with, and and with some of the food quality issues, I think macros yes. are a useful tool to know where some of your traps are because you yeah. can look at one food and look at the other and if you were just to look at them, they would seem the same and then you look at it and you're like, this is going to make me die or yeah. fat. Yeah, or yeah, because you don't know that Kentucky Fried Chicken is exactly. not real chicken. Yeah, so, okay, so, 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 so there, there's, there's value, but like... No, there's value, but that's not what they sell it under. They sell yeah. it as macros is because 2,600 calories does this. Yeah. Which is not true. We talked about it so many times. I'm not gonna go through it again. But basically, calories don't mean shit if you don't integrate the state you're in within your digestive process. So, to me, that the programming is the same way. A program is to create training habits. Go to the gym four times a week, mm -hmm. six times a week. Train some conditioning. Train some strength. Train some. Yeah, yeah. Do the structure work. Do this. So to co to give you training habits, if you don't have any, that's awesome. But let's be honest. That's it. Yeah. After that, 85%, do 85% on Monday on, and on Wednesday feel the same? Yeah. Fuck no, they don't. There's some days 85% feel like 120, or days it feels like 60. You're not going to tell me lifting five reps at that weight that day when it feels like it's 120% will do the same thing on you like it does when it feels like it's 60. You're not in the same state. Yeah. It's you're not the same lift. And the truth is, you're a different person on that day. You are. You're capable of different things. And people understand how true that is. And nobody, I, I remember, it's a, I really know, a crazy do, round here. Yes. But, but there's a, there was a saying, I remember, it's like, no man ever walks in the same river twice. Because exactly. it's not the same river, and you're not the same man. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's the way it always is. It always is. You know? Each state has its own almost hormonal levels, has its own behavior patterns, has its own, like, that's a Friston model. Every state has its own thing. And, and if you don't understand, yes. Slightly under recovered and you get pulled underwater a little bit, a couple days consecutively, and then you go into the gym. Now you're in you flight. Are, you are not the guy yep. that's gonna come and rip the head off a fucking bear. Because now, workout, now basically, you know when your confidence got shattered a bit by mm -hmm. that workout of yesterday and you show up and you're supposed to do heavy power clean, but you are slightly in flight, you're fucked. 85% yeah. is not 85% anymore. You have to recognize that. It's the same thing as if you learn to swim in a pool and you go to the ocean. It's not and the you same. Go, Ooh. Yeah, because not you're freaked same. out by the ocean. So suddenly, if you don't integrate that in your training, you think you're going to swim just as fast as in the pool. You're fucking killing yourself. You're yeah. going to drown. So we go, no more scale. Well, at first, she kept on weighing everything. Okay. Let's be honest. But basically, I'm like <laughs> auto-regulation, which means you're going to tell me 
when you won't eat certain things. And she's like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, you're going to have protein is uh, until you're full. Like, I'm never full. I was like, then keep eating protein, fuck. Yeah. But only at night. What, what do you mean? It's like, no, no lunch. What does that e What? And so that was the first two weeks like that. But she starts to do the protocol the way I ask, the one we do, right? Because I, I will say this, from what it sounds like, because the French accent convinced her. Well, that too. Yeah, but, but I mean, I mean, at least the one thing you've learned, the beginning of the nutrition protocol, the way you do it, is pretty much kind of hard, fast rules to figure out how you feel based on things. Yep. And I think that does translate pretty well to someone who's really good with hard, fast rules, right? I spent. At least you just got told exactly what to do, kind yep. of. But I spent every waking moment figuring out how I could cheat that system. For oh, sure. Yeah, she needs because to talk about this. It's <laughs> so good. Like what? You mean to tell me that I'm going to be okay not eating protein all throughout the day? You're crazy. Like, how am I supposed to control myself with this whole container of nuts? I'm going to eat all of them. Yeah. As you said, to stop eating when I'm full. Well, I'm not full. Listen, the nuts thing is still a work in progress. For most people, I have fingerprints on my yeah. cashew bag yeah. over here that aren't mine. But I would, yeah, so I, I found every way <laughs> that I could game it. And then when it came yeah, time. Th this is when it gets funny because then I learned a lot from her reactions. Because she's like, so you say when you have an emotional moment, you can have carbs. She was like, I'm very emotionally unstable. <laughs> can I have carbs? <laughs> I'm feeling stressed. <laughs> so she would walk herself into it and say, I should have carbs. I was like, you're gaming the system. She's like, well, fuck yeah. If you tell someone like me that I can have carbs while I train, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's train more. maximum carbs, maximum training. Uh, I'm going to train eight hours a day <laughs> so I can eat bagels <laughs> and <laughs> And I was like, good, go train eight hours a day because I had to choose something. Yeah. But guess what? She did. But also she kept weighing the stuff and having fun with this and everything. The protein at night she followed. But you, now you start to follow the protocol correctly. Yeah. By day three, what happened? My sleep is up to like 120 minutes of both. Nice. I feel REM and deep sleep. She good. slept seven hours at night or eight or whatever the fuck. She, the morning she's like, I slept. I feel weird. What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> she was like, I don't feel the same. I'm like, I hope not. Yeah. It's like, how do you feel? I don't know, but I slept a lot. So I have energy. I'm like, good. So that, that's a good thing. She's like, really? Yes. <laughs> no, seriously. You're supposed to sleep that much. She was like, I haven't slept like that since before college. I'm like, yes, it's been 10 years. That was not a good sign either, by the yeah. way. Um, and then we asked, start square prior session. Where, but now you can tell she's like, I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, why is this working? Like, I thought you were just bullshitting me. If it wasn't for your French accent, I would not have, <laughs> you know, agreed to any of this anyway. At that stage, she's agreeing to go out with somewhat. I don't know that I ever agreed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you're going to make it sound like sexual harassment out there. They're, they're going to tell me there it is. I think at that point, yes. Kidnapping. No, there was no kidnapping. She said yes, I swear. That's why we have this. I agreed uh, to coffee. You didn't show up. That was Scott. That was Scott, who kept me on the fucking podcast. Uh, so, little break in the story. I'm doing the podcast, the c Way podcast, which one, one one of the best. So, I'm okay yes. with that. But I tell him, because now she said yes. So I'm like, so it's like, Scott, I got to be done by two. Like, uh, honestly, 1.30 would be good because that way I get, you know, I come back, I don't catch traffic, I'm there by 3.00, yeah. and I say we can have coffee at 5.00. We do the podcast, he lets me go, it's 3.30. Which is basically is pretty much in the worst place in Los Angeles to get anywhere from. On top of time. it, I got to San Diego at 8.00. Took me four and a half hours to make it instead of an hour and a half. Scott did that to me, except I had nowhere to go. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I am so, I'm texting her, say, I am so sorry. And she's like, um, we can meet this week. I'm like, I leave tomorrow morning. She was like, yeah, so we can meet this week. So, no, 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 like I leave, leave tomorrow morning. She's like, yeah, well, she, say, she said I was going to Las Vegas or something. Yeah, I was somewhere so for she's a weekend. Like, or yeah, yeah, like in next week. <laughs> yeah, like next week. I was like, no, I'm not in the country. Either. Anyway, so long story short, so I made her come to Turkey and said, there you go. That's where we finally had coffee. <laughs> That's, yeah, in New York, anyway. Um, <laughs> so, she starts to sleep, basically. So that was the first crack in the shell, basically, because then she's like, shit, that works. I don't know how, I don't know why. It goes against what everybody has ever said, but it works. Hmm. So now, she starts to follow the protocol correctly, but now here it comes, it's like, am I going to get leaner, am I going to get fat? At that stage, it was more like, I'm going to get fat. So at some point, she gets one pound, and 
the whole universe just fell apart. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm 156. I'm like, okay. Two days later, she's 154. That's another problem. But that's where the crack started to show in the entire thing. So she was starting to let go, finally, of all that control freak stuff. But yeah. Yeah, there was actually a moment. I'm following the protocol more regularly. I'm making some decisions in my life that are for the better. And I wake up one day, and I'm like six pounds heavier. So my, my world is over. Like, <laughs> I, it's just. The, the world is ending. But n I'm finally able to connect it to things that to actually something. make sense. Like, uh, yeah, you're stressed the hell out because you're moving back home, uh, back across the country selling the rest of your shit, and then moving right. to a Dude, different... Dude, six yeah. pounds happened was um, she was back with her parents, right? So she's back in Philly, and she's about to move to Holland. So she's about to come uh, to see me for a week. Yeah. Right, so we can decide to live together and all that stuff. But she's at her parents, that's not going too well. They don't know about me fully either, so the whole stuff. Was, so she was so stressed out. She was in flight all the time and she started to hold water like crazy. And I was telling her, I was like, yeah, but you have to understand why, you know what I mean? And that stress is like, it's just gonna be there. Yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? Once you, you start dealing with it, yeah, it's yeah. just there, yeah. Two days later when I get here, finally, uh, I'm back to the weight that uh -huh. I was. And imagine the, what you would have, what you would have thought to do to react to that before otherwise. yeah oh my god cut my food intake in half keep yeah. training i gotta work and then fucking no, just crash you know n like n nine hours a day in the gym mm -hmm. until yeah. she's I back mean, to the weight yeah that's wild. so but so we know so now basically the nutrition has changed and now she's 162 with the same body fat percentage she was at 155. she's back to her previous numbers strength is back can you lift your shoulders or uh, arms yeah. overhead yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing hurts uh, the numbers are going back up. You you squatted two sixty five four. Yeah, I don't know how to do math in <laughs> kilos, <laughs> so I thought I was doing like two forty five. And when I did the math afterwards, I'm doing five by two sixty five for reps. So nice. like five sets of three at two sixty five. So the strength is back up. The numbers are getting close to what they were before, except now she's seven pounds heavier. And yes, it is muscle, no matter what the assholes on Instagram <laughs> want it. We had that conversation about a guy who says she's the same body fat percentage, looks exactly the same, seven pounds heavier. It's like, you can't say it's muscle. I was like, then what is it then? It could be water weight. If it was water, I'd see a difference. All right, so water right. weight with no difference physically, same body fat percentage, but water weight. When you see me naked every day, I'll take your opinion. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I think I know no, what my body looks like. By the way, he won't see you naked. <laughs> um, second of all, uh, well, if you gain seven pounds of water, you're going to get it under the skin as well. Mm -hmm. So it would show on a, on a scale. It's a gallon of water. That's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So if you gain it, basically, if it's water weight, your body fat percentage will show, right? All that means that basically all that water went into the muscle. That's with, with the glycogen. Therefore, you would have more muscle. Yeah. That's how you gain muscle. Glyco you know, yeah. glycogen. So if I found a way to make you gain seven pounds of water directly into the muscle, I'm going to have every single bodybuilder out there begging to come to Utrecht so I can show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. That is the dumbest argument I've ever heard. Yeah. And I've heard a few. So, so from a, go, no, go ahead actually. Before it's really on. easy to build muscle when you actually digest the protein that you're For eating, sure. when you sleep, sleep yeah. and when you actually use the muscles you're training. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I didn't know where my ham, I still don't really, I'm getting there, but I don't know how to use my hamstring. Yeah. Like, if you told me to squeeze my, that. if you told me to make a bicep, Two months ago, I still have trouble with it, but I couldn't. Like, mm -hmm. I had no mind-muscle connection. Yeah, yeah, so bicep, she's moving the weight, but no clue where yeah. the, wa the weight is, you know, in the muscle-wise. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to contract certain muscles, so she'll be in ba building imbalances. The trap takes over, the shoulder hurts. Inflammation, continuously, we stop that too through the nutrition protocol, right? So now mm -hmm. she's getting muscle, bigger legs, so of course the squat goes up, and you did very well doing the open. Yeah. So it did not impact our conditioning and stuff like that. So at some point past the nutrition, we started to go into the training because that more like that three hours a day was just beating you to shit yeah. and you did not see the result for it. So we applied the same idea, which is it's not about training ingested, it's training digested. How much of the training can you do that still bring results? And again, the training cannot go against sleeping, cannot go against uh, all that stuff. Yeah. 
go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So that was very important. So how, what, how did we change the training? So the how did you change the training? The last month that I've been here, I've been to a CrossFit gym like tw mm -hmm. three times. Yeah. Um, but we have done a lot of strongman stuff or bodybuilding stuff. Yeah. Um, still doing conditioning. Yeah, still doing yeah. conditioning. Yeah. Um, probably haven't really. The first time I did any gymnastics or Olympic lifting was in the open workouts, mm -hmm. and I did fine. Yep. Um, but I've been listening to how my body feels. So like yesterday, Monday, I woke up in a really shitty mood. Mm -hmm. I was really angry, and I was supposed to come deadlift. But all I wanted was carbs, and I felt like I could do a sustained effort. So I did a long cardio session instead. Really long, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I felt and then you good. And you killed it because you did what, like that one mile run, mm -hmm. followed by 50 cal on the asshole bike. Yeah. Three, three rounds. Ugh, I yeah. don't want to do that at all. And and instead of saying like, coming in with a plan and hating myself while yeah. I was doing it, I s assessed the situation when I got here. Like. Yeah. And yesterday was Thursday, and then that's when you squatted, 265 for five sets of three. Yeah. Yeah. With good form, no belt, everything was good. Yeah. So you did the strength training anyway. You just didn't do it that day, yeah. right? So that's that's a little bit what I want to do on. The, so, but by the way, so we're going to explain exactly what is it that we do, um, that how we want to approach the um, auto regulation training group, is because there's different layers to it. Is first of all, people can bring their own programming because I, I don't mind that at all. What I want them to understand is what the the intent of the workout. Like if you're doing conditioning, then it can be, you know, if it's at a certain amount of weight and then you wreck yourself, you can do it. So the intent behind the, the workout is, is, a, is an important one. And just like so certain days you'll have more protein, others you'll have less. If you come to the gym that day and it's not deadlift day, then it's not deadlift day. Yeah. Like, you know, just because it says deadlift on your sheet <coughs> doesn't mean it's deadlift day. Maybe it should be conditioning day. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't have to do the 85 percent because he said so that day. Just like you don't have to eat 300 grams of protein if you're in a shitty mood, angry mood all day, you won't digest it. If you don't digest the protein, it's useless to put it in your mouth. And I sure as shit shouldn't leave my session hating myself more than when I got there, because the whole idea of doing fitness in the first place was because it made me feel good. Yeah. Can we go back to that? Like, <laughs> how can? By the way, how can you be successful in anything if you hate yourself and what you're doing every single of the day? You know what I mean? Like that idea that you can be successful at anything in life, not loving it is absurd. Like any art form, any skill I've ever seen, you have, it's not 10,000 hours, it's 10,000 passionate hours. So if every hour that you put is an hour where you hate yourself and hate what you do, how good can you become? Mm -hmm. Maybe that works for six months a year, but you'll never get good, you'll never be good at anything in, with that mindset. And you it's certainly won't do it for a long time. Well, and exactly. You'll quit within if, one if year. If you fall into that more trap, like your, the, the, the trajectory is very high, but your ceiling gets limited. I mean, it, you, you have such a short duration that you can survive it, that your ceiling is way if, low. If you don't love what you're doing, you won't do it for long. Yeah. I, that, that has to be universal truth. Give me a fucking break. You're supposed to love fitness because you feel so good about yourself and becoming a badass. In it. I'm not saying that you should love the workout because every workout is going to be uncomfortable, but you should love the action of going to the gym. You, that, that's, I mean, when you start to sacrifice that, you won't get better out of it. It should be, it should feel rewarding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Everything, there's a why. Yeah, like there's yeah. a reason. At, at the very least, if you, that's where I'm at when we talk about people who don't, can't, maybe can't pin down a goal necessarily. Yeah. It's like, uh, what if you just came in and had fun and felt like you accomplished something? Maybe if then, you feel yeah. then we removed all these stakes and, yes. we, and then and then you can then trust in a a program because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're going in and okay, now I know what I need to do for this thing today and yeah. I'm just gonna do it. And it's thing. today. But so yeah, so this week this is what I want you to do. But today you come and you feel like shit, all right, how about we do bicep curls yeah. and a chest pump? Because well, that's all you're gonna do plus correctly today. And there's days, right? There, yep. There's, there's there days, days where maybe what I need is to come in and I need fucking to, like I need, I need like I need like heavy, heavy triples on deadlifts, like yep. just something where I gotta get like you know nose torque, death metal, yep. slap the back, let's do yep. it. Um, but here's the deal: if if I had eight sets of triples on my program, oh, say two three days ago, I went to the gym and I was like. Yeah. No, like it, not only did I physically not feel it, I wasn't in a place where I just you know, I, I don't want to be it. there. You know, yeah. So you know what? We'll do a pump session. We'll do a few other things. No, I want to do some. Days, by the way, accessory some work and you're good. Some days you need to go to the gym and actually like yourself. Yeah. I have days where 
It's like today, I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to take the 220 sandbag, put it over the head. It's just, I would like just to enjoy my day. And why does listening to your body mean less work? Because right. last time yeah. I checked, my body's always going to tell me to do more. Like, I'm yeah. always going to do more. Yeah. I'm just going to do what my body is going to let me do today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we got to stop, stop fighting against ourselves. Yeah, that idea that this can impose this, anything is absurd. Like, mm -hmm. all my work from, you know, the nervous system tells me the opposite, that this is 20%, this is 80 yeah. You You can't decide how your body is going to react to the training. It's the other way around. You have to go and feel your body and go, today it's more conditioning, today it's more. There are ways to do this, by the way. You know, if you're in fight, if you're in flight, I can tell now the days when I need to do conditioning versus heavy. I know exactly because I, I can read the signals. Just like I know if I should have protein or carbs or stuff like that, we have to have a training session where we know if you should do conditioning or strength or this or that. Yeah. It's not that hard if we just listen. To it. Your body knows already. Mm -hmm. Like you go to some gym, if you could actually listen to the signals, you know what you should be doing. All right, so let's do that. That's what I want with your total regulation training group is that. It's like, look, this is your program for the week. Come yeah. with your own program, but this is a week yeah. of it. Get this w work done this week. This is the intent. But let's optimize exactly. our ability to do it, do it right. This is the intent of each workout. And today, which intent can you follow truly? Yeah. And you and once you get used to that, you'll know. Some days are sled days. Yeah. Fuck it. Some days are not. Some days are not. Most days are not. <laughs> but when it's there's one, one day a week, yeah, one, exactly. You're just gonna, gonna fucking it. kill it. It's yeah. like, well, if I can't do it for two weeks, then maybe you shouldn't do it for two weeks. Yeah. So, or guess what? Get there. Well, and that's the other thing is if you are uh, strong enough, capable enough, uh, mentally tough enough to bring the intensity on some of those things, right? Uh, your capacity to get the work out of it is much greater anyways. We mm -hmm. talked in the yes. past how like, you know, I think Brian Shaw deadlifts every two to three weeks max. That's still it. Still freaking strong. And he's still strong shit, but why? Because he's efficient and he's very, very, very strong. Yep. So he's, al he's able to do a lot of fuck, way more work well, yep. in that time than, than I'm going to do. Yep. Uh, which means he can do the work, but then maximize his ability to recover from it. And he could do twice as much work if he deadlifted twice as often. Yep. But he would Is that going to make him better yep. or make him feel better? No. He'll make it, he'll so why does he, he would yep. not need to throw more at it? Yep. And and that is a ev this is a trap that everybody falls into. Yep. But I do see often, at least with people who pursue one thing really well, is there's way less variables. So the balance, you have to find that balance. Yep. You know, so guys, it's like strength guys. So many top end strength guys, three days a week, maybe four days, training. Yep. That's, that's about that's it. That's about it. Yeah. That's about it. Yep. And they spend the rest of the time sleeping and eating and resting. Yeah, by the way, people understand that. Is you don't do that shit while working as a social worker all day. Yeah. And coaching three classes a day. And this, you don't do that. And doing a bunch of, well, and piling massive amounts of conditioning and Metcons on top of it. Yep. And then wondering why you're not getting stronger. It's like, all right, where are we going why with this? Yeah, but yeah. then there's why you're not sleeping at night. Did you yeah. lose your period? Did you, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, that's what happens. No, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't, because we, revert, we uh, reversed enough of this to we know did, that we can we do it on a regular basis. We did mention your period came back after your yeah. Oh, yeah, right, by the way. Yeah. About how long? And how long from when you had kind of started with the protocol? Uh, a month. Like the, the next month. Six weeks ago. Yeah. The only other thing that I was doing with the nutrition protocol was I started doing the oblique openers. Mm -hmm. Those were the two yeah. things yeah. that changed. Because like, we, we were yeah. like, let's pin this down. Yeah. Um, the oblique opener also, there's something to yeah. add that, but that's a, a bit more complex issue. But um, yeah, but so we, re we reversed the course, we've done it. Like t to me, the training stuff is exactly like saying, I need to eat more protein. If you can't digest it, then how good can it be for you? Mm -hmm. you so but people say, well, I can just eat more protein and hopefully I digest a little bit. Yeah, but you know what the downside- At what cost? What cost? You know what happens if you don't digest it? You have to understand this isn't like, oh, I'm gonna shit it out. No, 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 no. It stays right here in your colon where it starts to putrefy. That's where protein, undigested protein goes. It goes right here in your colon and then it starts to kill the gut flora that is there. We know that. Mm -hmm. It's been tested, there's double blind studies on this. Uh, this empirical evidence that basically undigested protein kills the, kills the get, gut flora. So when you absorb more protein that you're not digesting, you have to understand you're not doing, you're just not playing the odds. You're literally killing certain things in your body that you need for your own good behavior. 
and things like this. So like all the holding water right here, yeah. I would love to see if that's, yeah, if that has to, to do also with the fact that all, got, all this area is under attack, literally putrefication of, so basically you have shit right there that shouldn't mm -hmm. be there. That's putrefying organic matter. And imagine the sympathetic reaction you get out of trying to get rid of that. I bet you the holding water there has something to do with that as well. You have a massive sympathetic reaction because your body has to attack it. So now you're asking your immune system to, to go after the protein that yeah. were not digested. That's not his role. Like that's not the yeah. job of the, of the immune system is to, is not to, is, his job is not to attack protein. So when you pound more protein that you cannot digest, that's literally what you're doing. You're causing your immune system to attack you. That is not good. That's why like the whole idea, like having more protein than you can digest, it's far more damaging than people understand. Yeah. Same thing with training. Having more training that you can digest in ruins you on so many levels. Yeah. This has to stop. Like the more stuff, no, 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 just enough. Now, I mean, based on how you feel. We have to have exactly the same thing going. Otherwise, we're going to see the same stuff, hating yourself, losing your period, not sleeping at night. By the way, if you can't sleep at night, why the fuck are we doing any of it? Right. You're like, you're in a days all day, you have to have six liters of coffee. You wake up every day going, I hate my life. Like just that alone. If you're not sleeping at night, your nutrition sucks, your training sucks. Like let's just, let's start with that. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's true. Like if your training and nutrition do not allow you to sleep well at night, you're doing it wrong. I don't care who your coach is. I don't care what programming you're following. You can't build muscle. You can't get fitter. You can't be a normal human being on shitty sleep. Because those three things are kind of the three things, right? That's it. To getting muscle and that. improvement and adapting, that's that's how it does. You Deep train, sleep, you sleep. eat, yep. and you sleep. Um, and I, I don't know that there is any of them in, as individually as important as sleeping. Yeah. What? Deep right. sleep, REM sleep for yeah. your mental health, physical health. Yeah. There's no fucking. And problem. everyone always tells you it's like them you can't telling you. train shitty sleep. Right. Yeah. They tell you, tell you to that. sleep better. Okay. Tell me how to sleep yes. better. Yeah. Yeah, they say, well, <laughs> stay in bed. I can be in bed eight hours and still get shitty sleep. Get, She's done it. Yeah, get some yeah. clever sunglasses and fucking, yeah. Yeah. you know. Or basically take Ambient, yeah. which might not improve your deep sleep and no. REM sleep. No. And so, but they say, yeah, uh, focus on sleep. How? What does that mean? Focus on sleep. What the fuck does that mean? Yes, I'm trying. Thank you, because I know because I didn't sleep well at all for, until the protocol. I was never sleeping well. It's like, what does that even mean? That, that's another way of... Shocking the issues. I mean, like, that's not my job. I'm a nutritionist. You can pass the responsibility yes, to somebody. And usually to the athletes, who, of course, is in a hole, and you're telling them, so all they're going to do is block it, block it out. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with sleeping. No, now you're just lying. Because are they supposed to fix it? They don't even know where to start. Yeah. And if your nutritionist or coach or trainer um, wants to help you get better sleep, you got a good one, I would yeah. say. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's that that that's, that's a, a good big starting one. point. That's a good starting point. Instead yeah. of just putting it on you, like, well, all right, here's what I think. And even if it is simple steps like sleep hygiene and don't forget, right, you that, that, you know, let's, let's, yes, let's that do that. You. But let's, but I think that is that is the most important part of the equation, um, and and it's totally missed. Yeah, like if you prioritize, 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 prioritized the number of grams of protein that you get over the number of hours of deep sleep and REM. You're a fool. Yeah. Or your nutritionist is a fool. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's true. By the way, hormonal levels affected by sleep? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness. What do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Happiness affected by sleep? Yeah. Okay. So do you wake up in the morning rested? Do you wake up in the morning going like, I'm going to crush the day? If you don't, you're doing it wrong. It is, by the way, we talk about losing your period, how it is not normal, is not okay. To wake up going like, oh my God, I'm more tired than last night. That is not normal. That is not okay. If you wake up in the morning going like, I need to sleep six hours more. You have, to have eight hours of sleep and you feel you need four more. It's not normal. It's not okay. Seven, eight, you're fine. But by the way, eight hours in bed with your eyes closed does not mean you slept well. Like we have to stop with the eight hours. What does that mean? Get a fucking Fitbit, get an aura ring, right? But if you're under an hour and a half of REM sleep and an hour, under an hour of deep sleep, there's a problem somewhere, more or less. Like this, it depends on people, but you get the yes. idea, right? Yeah. If you have five minutes of deep sleep a day, you have a fucking problem. Yeah. If you have an hour of REM sleep a day, you have a fucking problem. Can we start with that? For sure. And for you big guys out there, get a fucking CPAP. 
Oh, there, totally is that the Darth Vader stuff? She's sitting right over there. Yeah, yeah. That thing right there has absolutely changed my life. Fully. Yeah, if you're a big dude absolutely. and you have sleep, sleep apnea. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, there, there are things that, you know, I, I don't know that I could, I could eat my way to a smaller neck or that I would want to. But uh, <laughs> so, so at this point, I, that's, that, that is what I've used. And, and, and between that and the nutrition, now my sleep is just, it, it's, you should, if you're not jealous of how good I sleep, you should be. Yeah, because pleasant. you don't know how yeah. bad you sleep. Abs are <laughs> old news. Like yeah. sleep Dude. quality <laughs> is the new thing now. Yeah, but but and by the way, you can still have it. I got abs now while sleeping better or while still being strong. And um, not hate and you don't hate yourself. Yes. And you like training. Yes, and like you enjoy training you again. You live your and life. And exactly. You actually enjoy your spouse. You enjoy being around your kid. You like your you like your days. You if like you your wanna, life. Yeah. It is possible. By the way, we have to stop with the sacrifice stuff. Like you have to sacrifice relationships, uh, enjoying your family, enjoying your life, doing, having hobbies. Yeah. Fuck me. How about hobbies? She couldn't have any because she fucking hated everybody. That's the saddest thing I hear when I see some fitness people. Yes. And and, no. and, and you talk and it's like, well, what do you, what do, you do? What do you do for I fun? CrossFit. Fit. I train. Yeah. I was like, well, like, Fighting. I mean, I'd be like, I don't know, do you play PlayStation? To give me something. Like, what do you like Guitar, to do? Guitar, chess. And it's usually, it's, it, there's, it's nothing. It's like, even man, draw. we got to get, <laughs> yeah. get Two hours out. of no one around me, so I don't have to listen to anyone <laughs> speak because I'm that mad. That, yeah. that was no, my hobby. Yeah. yeah, I talk to them, like, I can't watch a whole movie. <laughs> I can't stay sitting that long. I can't, and I'm like, guys, like, how far are we taking a dysfunction? But again, like, because there's still people out there going to go like, well, if I don't do all this, I'll never be successful. Maybe Good her luck. or she could, but I can't. That's not true. You can have all of it. Yeah. That, that idea that you, you the, that again, there are sacrifices to be made when you want to succeed. Like, for example, time. Yeah. That's you're going to sacrifice time because you have to go to the gym. You have to do this. You will sacrifice time. The nutrition protocol means you can have sugar all day. So you're going to have to sacrifice things. That's true. The question is not that. The question is how far do sacrifices go? Sacrifice your sleep, your periods, your well-being, your love of your own life. So that is not normal. Yeah. And That's you cannot be successful if you don't like exactly. what you do and yourself. Those sacrifices are going to get in the way of you getting where you want to go. You cannot, if you don't love yourself and what you do, you cannot make it. I don't care what is it you do. I don't care if you want to be a world champion barista, you can't make it. You know what I mean? Like the world champion barista, the dude made one million espresso. One million. Isn't that a baffling number? This is 300, 300 a day for 10 years. That's a baffling number. Right? You're going to tell me you're going you're gonna to make one million espresso without loving what you do and yourself in the process? There's no fucking way. Yeah. And if you don't love it, you're going to hate yourself for doing it all that time. And you won't That's get to a million. Yeah. You'll get to 10,000. Yeah. You'll get to 1%. That's, that's the bottom line. You will get to 10% of where you want to go if you don't love yourself and what you do. And without the sleep, cravings all day, all that stuff, you can't make it. Yeah. Well, guys, we are at an exceptionally long amount of time. Where are we? Probably like an hour 45. Oh, shit. shit. Man, and we, we, have, we have a Facebook Q&A we got to get to in about 45 minutes. Oh, so there you go. So we've got time for that, I'm but uh, I had some issue. That camera ran out of space, so I freed that up and we're good. That one stayed rolling the whole time, so we like still have it. a whole episode of video. I like it. Yeah. Maybe it was, a, was not as uh, aware as I should have on storage no, beforehand, but whatever. There we go. Uh, uh, so anyway, that's going to have us wrapped up for today. Kayla, thank you for coming on. I'm mm -hmm. certain we'll have you on again. Yes. Um, because I think continuing the conversation. She will stick around. Well, here's the other thing. Us two dudes are not, I mean, I don't think you're saying anything that we haven't talked about, but I promise it's going to connect much more with women hearing it from you sure. than Julian and I saying, what you're doing is wrong. You know, but plus I'm a bit theoretical when I start to get at it, so it's, I think it's great to have yeah. a, a practical approach to things and a human approach. And any sense. advice I'm giving to females as far as fitness goes, they look at me and go, that's not I what I look like. I don't want to look like, like you. Fuck yeah, out of here. Exactly. So, so it's always good to have a, a voice of moderation. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But uh, the auto-regulation training group, which we've talked about, that's going to be May 1st. Uh, that's going to be at, you can find it on all our social media stuff, but also we'll at strongfit.com. Yeah. Strongfit um, it'll be under there under the subscriptions also. Mm -hmm. So um, where else do you we have to can promote? can find us at strongfit1. Tyler F. In Stone, what's your Instagram? OK32. OK32. <laughs> You're going to get and more uh, subscribers. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, the gonna weirdos are going to come out. They're coming. <laughs> that's Coffee Girl. So all you ladies that are it. That's the one. Yeah. 
so uh, we got we have we did all the Instagram Facebook community group um, trophy community and we also do have for, for ladies if anything that Kayla mentioned today can actually we do have a women's uh, strong fit women's yep. only group so um, if you want to have these conversations without uh, you know like a whole world full of dudes I think uh, Julian, you pop in and check on that. I only I, I only use it to move content into there. If I, have I'm only when they tag me on something, otherwise, yeah. I, because the that's dialogue, a women's group. The dialogue so and the conversation should be women based. Yeah, it's it's among the uh, the women. Yeah, so I don't mind community. answering, but I'm not gonna, you know, like you it's a women's group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you take care of it. No boys allowed. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, so. no, she'll take care of it. That should be her job. She has access to me all the time, anyway. So yes. Uh, everything else can be found at strongfit.com. That, that'll include the equipment. Strongfitequipment.eu is our European store. Other than that, you guys kind of know the drill. So we'll see you next week. Uh, time traveling for us uh, probably just be tomorrow or something. So I will. No, because <laughs> I got a major pool tournament. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's I right. I can't wait to do we'll that. We'll recap one. that one when yep. we come back. Then. Yep. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Is as nice as it is with Julian. The problem is, when Julian's talking, there's always a part of you that has to plan for the next thing. Yeah. The problem is, Julian said a lot of things that I have to fucking process. So when I'm like, where are we going next? What do I do? What is this? Is the camera still on? And then Julian's like, right? And I'm like, oh, no. Well, and sometimes... Uh, Was this about Friston? Because I'm fucked. Even in this <laughs> Even in just normal life, when I have conversations with him, like he'll say something mind blowing, and the only thing I can say in return is, yeah. Yeah, right? And, and so, <laughs> so you can like absorb the information even, but then to have to absorb it in a way that hopefully someone gives a fuck to watch, yeah. fuck me. Yeah. Harder than you think. Or like, that's a perfectly logical explanation. Let's move. Next thing. <laughs>